Now, an interesting passage in Micah 6, 1 through 8. The children of Israel at this point are very, very religious, uh, very dedicated. They dress modestly, they tithe, they keep the Sabbath holy, they fast, they do all sorts of things that are religious in complete compliance with the law of God. And yet God's displeased with them. Uh, nothing outwardly, but he's displeased with them. Here's what he says. He said, the Lord says, I've got a controversy with you. This in uh, Micah 6. And ye strong foundations there, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel, O my people, what have I done unto thee? Wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. And they'd have been shocked at that. <laughs> wearied God? We've been wearied God. Why are we making God weary? We're, we're tiring God out. We're making him feel uh, weak. We're making him feel uh, frustrated and uh, just just tired. I just, want to, God, God says, I just want to lay down. I want to go somewhere and sit down. I just can't. My people are just tiring me out. They're wearing me out. He said, I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. I redeemed thee out of the house of his servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. He's reminding them of the great past that they've got, how God's blessed them. He said, wherewith shall I come before the Lord? Uh, I bow myself before the Most High, they say. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings and calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? So he's putting words into their mouth. He's saying, this is what you say. You're so dedicated. You're willing to offer your firstborn, the fruit of your body for the sin of your soul. Uh, you're willing to go all the way. There's nothing you're holding back. You're greatly sacrificial. These were very dedicated people, very religious people. He said, no, he says, here's what, verse 8, he has showed thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord doth require of thee. Now, this is a great passage. This is the only passage in the Bible that specifically states what the Lord is good and what the Lord requires of thee in a complete way. Here it is, three things. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Now, to do justly, if you look up, take your concordance and search the word just, justice, justly, throughout the whole Bible, and you will find that it reads like a liberal. God is very concerned about justice taking place throughout the land, not about it being legislated, but about, about it not be, he would be very disturbed if it were injustice were legislated, but he expects the individual to practice justice, to love mercy. I'm worried when I see Christians online, uh, not showing mercy for a couple of years now in social media, I've noticed how Christians just pile on to somebody, some, some preacher will sin and the Christians just pile on mercilessly. And, uh, they used to, they spent 10 years of their life following his mandates and his teachings. And then the media comes out against him and they pile on without mercy, uh, as if he were the greatest enemy of all. Uh, and then other situations come up. You, you just read people online all of the time. Some of the people repeat it over and over again, just without mercy, critical, judgmental, uh, vicious even. Listen, that's not Christian. I, I'm embarrassed to be, call myself a Christian the way Christians represent themselves online. If there are another name, I'd use it. That's how much Christians have defamed the name of Christ. Christianity is mocked in the land because of, the online presentation of so-called Christians. Uh, so God's wearied. I'm wearied by it as well. Now, here's a passage in Isaiah chapter 58. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, he says to Isaiah. Show my people their transgression, the house of Jacob their sins. So God wants Isaiah to reveal the sins and we need a time like that now. We need uh, God revealing sins to us. He says, uh, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. Well, that was good. 
And they said, God, we want justice. We want justice in our lands. We want laws passed that are just. We're tired of this injustice. They take delight in approaching to God. <laughs> so the children of Israel at that time just love to come to church. They just love to come before God. They love worship. They love lifting their hands and swaying and shouting, and they love the music, and they love the fact that they were people of faith. They were special. They loved their history. Uh, wherefore have we fasted, say they. This is what they said. They said, but why have we fasted? Say they, thou seest not. And they said, we fasted, God, but you didn't see us. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. So they're complaining to God that God has not blessed them like they expect him to. He's not come to their redemption and their aid um, in life as they would want. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. He said, God says to them, behold, ye fast for strife and debate. So he said that the motive behind their fasting was for strife. <laughs> How would you create strife by fasting? What about the people who don't fast? Would that... Would you have, would the fasters be, have strife with the people who don't fast or the people who don't, are not as dedicated as they are and debate. So they debated, they debated over their fasting. It was, a, it was a subject of discussion. Uh, virtue signaling again with, oh, I'm fasting today. And to smite with a fist of wickedness. Now they'd have been shocked at that. They said, I've hit no one. I haven't. I haven't struck anyone, the fist of wickedness. He's, he's talking about the, their social relationships here. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. So they were fasting, thinking that God would hear their prayer better if they fasted. You know, Christians have, throughout the ages have gotten so tied up. They think they wear a head covering, God will answer them. If they wear long dresses, God will answer them more. Uh, if they don't do this or do do that, or if they fast or if they pray or if they read a, a King James Bible, I, I'm King James all the way, but I'll tell you what, I know a lot of King James Bible believers that make me want to read the international version just because they read the King James. Uh, and that'd be a, <laughs> be, a, be a big come down. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. All right. Uh, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I've chosen? He said, is your fast the fast I've chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul, to bow down his head as a bulrush, to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Now, these, these religious people have been shocked. Here they were spreading sackcloth, laying down on it to a morning, uh, uh, praying to God, asking, uh, keeping every single law. And he said, I'm disgusted with your religious observance. Is not this the fast that I've chosen? Okay. Now God's going to tell us, this is, what I, this is what I actually wanted you to do that you weren't doing. This is the fast I've chosen. To loose, loose the bands of wickedness. That is any kind of burden, band, uh, restraints placed on other people, bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens. That's people that are heavily burdened. Can you imagine what it'd be across America if instead of Christians being online mocking and ridiculing, Christians were seeking to undo heavy burdens? He said, behold, you fast for strife and debate. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice be heard on how this is the fast I've chosen for a man to afflict his soul. It is to bow down his head as a bulrush. No, he said, this is the fast to loose the bands of wickedness, undo heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free, break every yoke. That means that you seek through your neighbors, through your friends, through your community to remove the burdens and the bindings and the constraints. Go, just walk up to somebody and say, what is it that burdens you? What is it that makes you uncomfortable? What is it that you feel like in life needs to be different that makes you unhappy? Uh, and whatever do, relieve their burden. Is it not to give bread to the hungry, bread to the hungry, and thou bring the poor that are cast out into thy house? When thou seest the naked, thou covers him, and thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. So instead of just hiding yourself away, 
as I'm an old person doing here. You go out into the highways and byways and you provide your oil and your wine and your bindings and you bind up those that the preachers and the priests and the Levites have passed by and then you take them to an end and you say, take care of them and whatever more I will pay. That's the Christian response. That's what Jesus taught. Yeah. All right. Finally, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. He says a condition for you getting mercy from God is for you to show mercy on others. Then in Mark twelve thirty, thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, namely this, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. There's none of the commandment greater than these. So God is wearied. I'm wearied too. I know some of you are. Uh, you know, I, I read about a, a man kidnapping a little girl from a shopping center, jerking out her mother's arms, r racing off to a motel. And the cops are able to locate, get in just in time to get the girl to the hospital for treatment. And if that, cameras hadn't been on, I'm sure they'd have beat him to death. And I see things like that, and that, that makes me sick for the human race. But as long as you know there's a, a large element of righteous, godly people out there, you realize that that's just an aberration. That's, but there's another kind of evil that runs through the, the Christian church, and it's pride. It is, uh, it is self-serving. Uh, it's uh, egotism. And uh, God is disturbed by it. God wants repentance. He wants us to repent and do the first works. He wants us to go out and love our neighbor as ourselves. So I'm encouraging you young people to get together and create a service, a ministry to people in need at a time like this. Let it grow. Let there be a thousand, two thousand, three thousand around the country. Give yourself a name. Uh, you can provide a, a, a website where people can contribute to it. You can have free groceries for people that need it. You can deliver medicines to people that need it. You can haul them to the hospital when they need it. All kinds of things you can do. Let Christians be known by something other than snarky criticism. All right. Now I know that's been kind of negative, but uh, I haven't gotten to preach for a while and, and uh, I've been watching the news. So that, that's what happens when you watch the news.